Immigration has always been a big part in our nation's story. For generations, Irish people have left to set up new lives and make their mark all over the world. So much so that there are about 70 million people with Irish roots scattered across the globe. And in 2013, it's up to all of us to invite friends and relatives home for a nationwide celebration of who we are and what we stand for. It's a chance to reunite, to bring us together. It's called The Gathering. In this series, six of our best-known immigrants are returning to their roots to do what they can to bring the diaspora back to their home place. They'll reunite with some familiar faces, help bring old friends back together, and send a message to the world asking them to come home. Tonight, Trevor Brennan returns to Leakslip in County Kildare to do his bit for the town. He'll revisit his rugby roots. Help reunite old childhood friends. He was like my brother. We said goodbye and it was horrendous. And put together a personal invite about his hometown so he can spread the word about Leakslip to the whole world. What we're looking to do is get as many people home from overseas to come back to Ireland to visit. I see that great community spirit in my town every time I go home. And I know they will be proud and they will stand up and they will do something. Leakslip is a town in northeast County Kildare. Situated on the Liffey and Rye River, the town has grown from a population of around 1,000 50 years ago to more than 15,000 people today. One of these people is former rugby player Trevor Brennan. Now living in Toulouse, Trevor was born in Dublin and spent all of his childhood in Leakslip before becoming one of Ireland's best-known rugby players. Trevor began his career with Barnhall Rugby Club in Leakslip. He went on to play for Leinster and was capped 13 times for his country. Trevor's most prestigious rugby awards, however, were winning two Heineken Cup titles with Stade Toulouse in France. I think any person leaving their home, going to another country, is difficult, you know. My biggest worry was the language barrier. We are in the famous home of uh, Stade Toulouse. I was lucky enough to play here between 2002 and 2007. It's tough coming to the south of France. And for me, French might as well have been Chinese. But uh, oh, some great memories playing with this club. Played in three European Cup finals with them and two French finals. So special in the heart, really, from myself and family and friends. And Following the end of Trevor's professional rugby career in 2007, he has remained in Toulouse with his family. He currently owns and runs the De Danu Irish Bar in the centre of the city. I'm married to Paula, Paula Kennedy, three, three boys. Um, we have a 14-year-old, an 11-year-old and a 5-year-old. Two big lads have just signed for Toulouse this year. Rugby's going well for them, they've been playing for the last four years and it's coming full circle again. I suppose my sense of Irishness when you're living away from home is you tend to pick out all the great things that are Ireland. Our beaches, our golf, our Gaelic football, our hurling, our heritage, our history. All them things make me want to be Irish and makes you want to be proud to say you're Irish when you're living away from home. I just think the idea to try and get people from all over the world to come back to their village, their town, their country can be a start of something special. <laughs> When Trevor Brennan comes home to Leakslip, it's not long before he is drawn to his parents' house. I go home three, four times a year, always stay with the mother and father for a couple of days. There's always a, a great meal put on, a great spread, the fridge is filled again. They make you feel welcome. They used to have a key in this house, but they took it off me a few years ago because I had a bit of a party when they were away. Oh, look at all the legends are in The house is really excited when he's coming home, you know. The mother looks forward to meeting him and the, and the brothers as well, like, like, you know. Oh, it's a really fantastic to have him coming home. Well, not bothering you. Home for a feed, are you? Feed, yeah. yeah There's the you? clothes. Will you wash them, yeah. will you? I knew that. You wouldn't want to be sensitive in this house, would you? <laughs> Trevor now would ring me every second day, at least. He'd be yapping away and he'd stay on the phone for like 
20 minutes, half an hour. You know, what makes me look forward to coming home here is obviously to see the family of the brothers still here, their wives, kids, the mother and father. How many sugars do I take again, man? Let me tea. Uh, here. I, I think I'll have to buy a screwdriver. You're losing your marbles altogether. If you actually take a step back and look at what your parents have done for you, let's say for the first 20 odd years of your life, at the time, probably didn't appreciate it so much, but it's only when you got older and you, you become a parent yourself and you know how hard it is to provide for your family. That's not very good to him, right? All the money I spent on him as he was growing up. Scrum hats, you name it. I think that's the great thing about families, that obviously they worked hard when we were younger to give us everything we had and sometimes it's nice to be able to just give a bit of payback. Not that they ask for it or anything, but it's just, it might be just something small, like a car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you put that in writing, please? <laughs> That's always good to come home, though. even though we all move away, get married, have kids, etc. We can still come home to the family home. I think that's a great Irish thing, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just great to have it here, to have the family home. home by getting a fresh perspective on how leak slip has changed from the air. The helicopter's not a problem. No fear factors, Trevor Brell. <laughs> Anything I'm afraid of is my mother and my wife. <laughs> oh, it's always exciting to come home, but to come home and get up in a helicopter and fly over the town that you grew up is just amazing. I've never seen it from this angle. When I was born, there was only 2,000 people living in Lake Slip. When I was 10 years old, you know, that population had quadrupled. There was 8,000 people. And in 10 years, Lake Slip had quadrupled in size, like new housing estates popping up everywhere, new shops, the Intels and the Ula Packards, Silicon Valley, you know, that's what they were called in Lake Slip. The townspeople of Lake Slip have come together in numbers to see what they can do to bring people home. Trevor has come along to a meeting to see what they're planning. What's really, really important about this gathering is that we just don't talk about it, that we actually go out and do something about it. That you actually go out and make something happen. It's a great opportunity for Ireland. It's a great opportunity for League Slip. Thanks for turning up today. Charlotte, I know you for years. I know you're involved yeah. with the Athletic Club in League Slip. What's your idea? We're running a midnight marathon. At midnight, obviously, yeah. at dawn, half dawn, marathon, half started marathon. at four o'clock. Yeah. A lot of our ex-members have gone on and moved on, moved abroad, and they're running in London, they're running in Munich, they're yeah. running somewhere else, so Brilliant. we wanted to come home and run for an hour around it's our track. It's a great yeah. idea. Coltis is a cultural body that promotes music, singing and dancing, and we've been doing that in Leakster for 32 years. We're inviting back all our past members for a gigantic session. It's brilliant like, to see the kids here, even from the local community, the little bit of Kaylee going on in the back there. It's brilliant and it's, it's what Ireland is all about. I'm from Exile Gymnastics and we're inviting people from all over the world, all our members, back to our display. That's what we're going to hold in each level. It is all making sense to me now. You speak to a couple of people in there and you know they've, they've family scattered all over the world and they all have great ideas now to bring people back. Trevor gets talking to Mary Kelly, who grew up in the town. Mary has come to the meeting since she has relatives abroad and wants to see how she might get involved. Well, I came here today to find out what it was all about, and now I find it's about bringing people back to Leixla um, to get this country moving again. I have people, dear, very dear friends and family away, and I, I would hope that this is a way of maybe them, they're bringing them back home. I think they all keep an eye on Ireland, and, and, and they all want to help everybody out, so yeah. I'm hoping this is the start, start of something special. Something special, yeah, yeah. and bringing Maybe. friends and family home. This, this one, Trevor wants to hear more from Mary Kelly, who was separated from her cousin Frank almost 40 years ago. Like Trevor, they used to play together in St. Catherine's Park in the heart of Big Slip. Mary, we're up here at Catherine's Park, obviously a special place for me uh, growing up as a child. It was our playground, but I know it's a special place for you because you used to play here with 
with my cousin Frank. Cousin Frank, yeah. And we were like brother and sister. The memories that I have is Frank and I playing in the woods, never being bored, always finding delight. And what kind of things would you do up here, like? Well, we used to build huts. Frank yeah. was fantastic at building huts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to jump in when, when it rained, then we'd somewhere to go. We couldn't believe it was such a beautiful place. We thought this was the only beautiful place in the world because we were full of imagination. Everything was possible in this beautiful place. Before Frank left for Canada, he lived in a now derelict house in the middle of the park. Hey, we're in the heart of the forest. The old house was here. It's yourself and Frank used to play in just behind the, the shrubs. It doesn't exist anymore. You see now, in my heart it does exist. I see the house there. I remember the times, you know, it's, it's really emotional even now yeah. as I speak about it, but there was a lovely little place we could sit, a little porch. It was sort of part of the woods and the garden. And, you know, the times, you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> it's all tough, huh? It is, you know, and after all these years, so long as Frank gone, over 30 years, yeah. and still, that's still here, and that house is still as real to me as it was yeah, so many years ago. Frank emigrated, obviously, to Canada. Yeah. He must have been heartbroken when that happened. It was heartbroken. Hard. He, was, he was like my brother. We said goodbye, and it was horrendous. And he rang me then from the airport just before he flew, and I just thought, this is the end. This is another part of me just gone, just gone. I couldn't think of anything else. I just could not believe that he was gone from the place. To come up here then was, it was horrendous for a while to walk by the house, to go to all the places that we used to go to, to go to the wishing tree. It just wasn't the same. So you made many a wish here, did you? Lots of wishes. Ah, tell me this. Make one now, close your eyes and make one. Okay. Don't tell me what it is now. Done. Done. Now, do you want to make one? I'll make one. <laughs> but you always have to give something back to the woods. Yeah. Don't forget. Not money. Not money. <laughs> Visa card. <laughs> you could feel the emotion. Even myself, I felt emotional. And I think we all have a story of some sort like that. And I think the next step for us is to try and contact Frank and see if he'll come home for the gathering. And, uh, you know, surprise Mary. It'd be, it'd be, I just think it'd be a lovely, uh, a lovely touch. Trevor Brennan has returned to Leakslip to help launch a year-long celebration of Irish culture. He's on a mission to reconnect the town with its emigrants and pay tribute to his home place by sending out an invitation to the Irish everywhere to come back home. <laughs> Trevor Brennan started his illustrious rugby career at Barnhole Rugby Club in Leakslip when he was just eight years old. We're all gathered here today to uh, welcome Trevor back. He doesn't know that we're going to be all here waiting for him this afternoon, so uh, when he comes in the door, I'm sure he'll be delighted to see us. So I'm looking forward to a big time. A wonderful barn, huh? She's looking well. This is where it all started. The rugby that I played here and the friendships I made, you know, in the first 10 years that I played here were, were very special. <laughs> and the friendships I made back then are the friendships that I still have today. Uh, stick me on the Guinness there, will you? <laughs> Not playing for another 10 minutes. <laughs> Any time Trevor returns here to, to League Slip, he comes back up to the club and he'll come up and he'll coach. Winter, bad nights with the uh, under 14, 16 and 18 side. He's a legend, you know, in his own lifetime in this rugby club. Where am I on the list for a president? Uh? <laughs> <laughs> the values that I learned at Barn Hall, family, friendship, certainly stood to me in the rest of my rugby career. Thanks for the great welcome that you always give us when we come back to the Emerald Loyal and well cheers lads. Well on a trip down memory lane, Trevor and some old teammates sit down to watch a game from 1999 when a legendary Barnhall team won promotion from junior to senior league competition. The importance of that team for this club is very simple. This club had a long-term ambition to go senior. 
And that was a long road. It took 30 years. But that was the squad that did it. So no matter what happens in this club from that date on, that will always be the squad that's most special. I think we had probably three sets of brothers on that team. It was like a band of brothers, to use that term, coming together in that squad. And I think that's very special. One of those brothers, Owen Burke, is telling Trevor about an important reunion the club are planning for next year. We're going to do a huge event here in the club where we're going to get all of the guys back to play in that squad back in 1999. Brilliant. And we're going to try and get all of the guys that are abroad, which on the last count off that team alone is seven guys. Oh, better keep yourself fit, I might put on the boots again, yeah, huh? You might even get an invite. <laughs> <laughs> Owen's motives for reuniting the team have a personal dimension. You're away now as well, and I have three brothers that are away at the same time. Three brothers away, my God. And then plus the other lads on that team, I mean, to, you know, it's probably a bit more of a selfish reason, but to get them all back, yeah. I suppose, for one time would be a huge event. It'd be great for both our families, and I think it'd be great for the club and great yeah. for the community. Inspired by the reunions at Barnhall, Trevor wants to reconnect Mary Kelly with her long-lost cousin in Canada. Mary and her cousin Frank shared a special bond almost 40 years ago before Frank emigrated. Trevor has taken the step to contact Frank in Canada to try and arrange a surprise for Mary. How I'd love to hold my hand out and shake her hand, but obviously... Yeah, I feel like I could. Yeah, I know, it's amazing, isn't it? Frank, I was uh, talking to your cousin Mary Kelly this morning. Oh, yeah. She told me you were like a brother to her. Yeah, I, you know, I remember Mary and, and all, you know, in St. Catherine's Park, we... We used to just, you know, as kids playing in the park all the time. It's still beautiful. It really makes me want to come home when I think of those things. Yeah. I can nearly feel it in your voice there, Frank. You're a bit emotional. I can see it in your eyes. Not usually an emotional person, but that uh, puts a lump in my throat, you know. Yeah, I can feel the same with Mary this morning, you know. Is there any chance you'd come home for the gathering next year, Frank? No, it didn't take me long to think about it, but absolutely, yes. I'd love to see Mary again. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Frank. And you got to let me know the date you're coming home. Well, Mary's promised she's going to cook a dinner for me. The more the merrier. The more the merrier. <laughs> With the subject of emigration in mind, Trevor wants to meet an old friend of his, local historian Seamus Kelly, to find out who traditionally left and who's leaving today. They take a tour on the Royal Canal to reflect where people have passed through Leakslip for generations. Five years this whole recession thing has kicked in and certainly I know a handful of my friends who've emigrated in the last three, four years to find work. Have you seen much of that yourself in Leakslip over the last couple of years? Every second family in Leakslip now have people in Australia. I ran a soccer team 14 years ago in Leakslip, under 13, a very successful soccer team. Five of that team are in Australia. Yeah. Basically there has been a massive tide of emigration, mainly in the 20-something age group, and my own young lad is married in Cairns now, and he's permanently gone. But you three kids yourself, I think Patrick's the only one who's away, isn't he? So far, he's yeah, the only yeah. one that's away. It must be very hard when you see your kids just going, and especially, you know, to a place like Australia. Right, it was extremely difficult. For example, I couldn't go to the airport when he was leaving. I got the daughter to drive him to the airport. Even three years later, it really hasn't got any easier it's for the family. Any easier, yeah. But... Uh, the main thing is to keep up the contact and to take the opportunities to contact and meet whenever we can. I think in today's terms with internet, telephone, Skype, there's just so many ways to communicate. That is important that when people do emigrate that they don't forget where they came from, that they don't forget the roots. People are proud to be Irish, all right. Our country's let us down a few times over the years and then we could talk all day about how people let us down, but it's up to us to dig ourselves out of the hole. It's the people who made the country, and it's us who get it up and running again. The next day, as Trevor's trip comes to an end, he's going to see Mary Kelly at her house. He hopes to make her wish come true with a specially recorded message from her cousin, Frank. How are you, Mary? Hi, Trevor. How are you? Uh, Mary has no idea, and uh, I'm already feeling a bit nervous about it. And we just have to see how it goes. Lovely garden, Mary. Thanks, Trevor. It reminds me of the woods. Yeah, a little bit wild. <laughs> Yesterday was a super day. It was great to meet you, and it was great to hear your story. I have a little message for you. We managed to do last night. And, and, uh... Yeah. 
you know, very, very uh, I'm just remembering the time when we grew up in the woods and St. Catharines and the things we did it together. And, you know, I've terribly fond memories of, of our childhood and I've missed you ever since the day we left. I always think about you and how your family is and how you're doing and, and I'm sure you think the same about us. Uh, you know, I think we should uh, communicate and get together more often. So, Mary, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I'm, Terry and I have decided in the family to probably come home next year. And I'm looking forward mostly, of course, to seeing you again. Mary, obviously, pretty powerful stuff there. Well, it can see that Frank feels it as well. Yeah. All those feelings never go away. As he said, he hopes to hold your hand and walk up. Up towards. <laughs> Seems a better bit about me, Frank itself. It's great, it's great. Surprised. I was shocked. Okay. All the emotions that I had before when he was here came right back, just as if he was sitting there beside me. So I'm glad he's coming back next year. I just can't wait. <sighs> It's almost very emotional for myself yeah. as well. I have to say, Mary, it's just, I don't know what it is. I'm just one of them uh, tear up fellas. <laughs> there's <laughs> That's no, nice. There's nothing That's wrong with crying. That's what, you know, Isn't it? I have to say, her reaction was was, was special and, uh, you know, it was one of them real human reactions. And, you know, personally, myself, just sitting in front of her, I felt it as well. It was nice. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's my <nice>, lovely. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> A week later, and Trevor is back in his Toulouse bar with some Irish expats. He's in his pub to launch his video invite to try and get people back home. For uh, the gathering 2013, what we're looking to do is get as many people home from overseas to come back to Ireland to visit next year. Back in Leakslip, and some of the former players who are trying to reunite a special team from 1999 have gathered at the club to watch Trevor's message. You know, to say this video hopefully will inspire people to come back to Ireland in 2013. So hit the button, Eddie. The only pain in rugby is regret. You have no choice about how you lose, but you do have a choice about how you prepare to win again. Coming together is the beginning. In 2013, the gathering is about league slip and every town in Ireland putting its best foot forward and creating reasons to come home. Keeping together is progress. The gathering is about each of us making a contribution by getting involved in an event or inviting someone home. Working together is success. What you get by achieving your goal is not as important as what you become by achieving your goal. Action is the foundational key to all success. Score for your home side in 2013. I'm from Ennis. I've been in Toulouse for eight months. Um, just saw the video and I thought it was excellent, really good initiative to, to bring people back to Ireland. My name is Eddie, I come from Limerick. I'm here in Toulouse uh, three years now. I'm involved with the Gaelic football team here in Toulouse, Toulouse Gales. And you know, after watching the video there from Trevor, you know, it gives a great idea that maybe we can organise a tour back to Ireland uh, in 2013. Well, my name's Sarah, I've been living in Toulouse for the last eight years. I'm uh, very excited to have Trevor representing my adopted city of Toulouse. And I would be delighted to get take part in any of the events that are going on next year. I'm Alex, I'm from Galway. After watching the video there, Trevor made it uh, kind of inspiring. Nice to see that Irish people are putting an effort in to get people back. In Barnhall Rugby Club, Trevor has arranged a special message for Owen Burke and some of the club's legendary team of 1999 who are reuniting next year. Hi lads, it's great to see you there in the club today and really hoping to see you next year for the reunion. Special little hello to Owen as well. 
Uh, hope to see you soon, mate. Bye. It's always nice to see your brother, but I didn't expect him to see him popping up on the TV like that. See you next year, lads. Enjoy tonight. Can I see now that he's already so excited about coming back for it as well. Hey guys, it's me, Remco Donkers. We're looking definitely forward to come back to League Slip and hopefully we can play a really good game and have a session afterwards. I was really surprised to see Remco as well. Big Dutch man, it would be brilliant to have him back involved and he seems very keen as well, so it's great that the word is out there already. People are really excited about this whole gathering. Everyone seems to want to do something. People really want to kind of stand up and be counted. Just being proud of being Irish and being proud of everything that we have and just showing that off to the world.